2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. If, we, if you would, we're just going to stay here. I got a lot of Scripture, so I'm not going to have you turn to it. We'll just we'll read it, but we're going to stay in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And the part of the chapter that I want to focus on is in verse 7 where the Bible reads, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And the title of my sermon is, Who is he in 2 Thessalonians 2.7? Who is he in 2 Thessalonians 2.7? Now, to get a little bit of background here, the reason I want to focus on who he is is because every pre-tribber will make he into one of two things. And that's where their whole doctrine gets messed up. Right. Now, there's two clear-cut scriptures. in the. I mean, there's a lot of clear-cut scriptures, but the two we run to is Matthew 24, 29 through 31, and 2 Thessalonians 1 through 9. That is our kind of go-to statement on the post-trib pre-wrath rapture. Yeah. But every single pre-tribber out there is going to take that he mean one of two things. The church or they're going to make it to mean the Holy Ghost, and it is neither. That's and right. because of that, they're in gross error. And we're going to kind of back up and do a little bit of a recap. Look at verse 1. It says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. The reason we know that's the rapture, uh, Matthew 24, 31, it says, And He shall send His angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together His elect from the four winds. So it's also called a gathering. Revelation 14 calls it a harvest and a reaping. Uh, look at verse 2. It says, That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, or by word, or by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. The day of Christ. Now, the day of Christ is, is uh, used interchangeably also with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Many pre-tribbers are going to make it mean two different things. So they're going to say, oh, wait, wait, back up. This is, this is the battle of Armageddon. This is when Jesus comes back on a white horse. And it's not, and we can prove it just by uh, 1 Corinthians 1.7. It says, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for, watch this, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 8. Who shall confirm you unto the end that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ? See that? It's like kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. Used in the same passage, yeah. it's the same exact thing. And then obviously we know it's the same because that's the only time when we're gathered unto him. Because when he comes back to the battle of Armageddon, the armies which were in heaven followed him and were with him. That's right. Okay, So they're the same thing. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.13 also says, For we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. I love Pastor Anderson's joke. Unless that's coming 1.5, that's got to be obviously the second coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, and look at verse 2. It also says that it's at hand. Okay, Don't let anybody deceive you that it's at hand, meaning about to happen. This is where the, the theory of imminency comes from. Like it's going to happen now. It simply can't be true. Genesis 27, 41, it says, And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed them. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand, meaning it's right now. Okay, It's at this time. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. So he wasn't about to slay his brother Jacob at any moment. The time of mourning was at hand, and then he was going to slay his brother Jacob. God also deals with opposites. The best commentary on the Bible is the Bible itself. Watch this. Jeremiah 23, 23, it says, Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? See what the opposite of at hand is? Afar off. So according to this passage, if I let someone deceive me that it's at hand, what is it really? It's saying it's so far off. It's not at hand. Look at verse 3. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the day of the Lord, the rapture, the gathering together of the saints, shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. I have heard it said, John R. Rice and Tim LaHaye both say this, that the falling away is actually the rapture. Now, last time I checked, nothing ever falls up. Yeah. Last time I checked, they, they fall down, right? Yeah. And that's all they got, literally. Everyone said, I, I was talking to someone before church, and they said, well, I really, Dustin, he said, well, I never really hear much support for the preacher of rapture. I said, there's a good reason for that. There is no support yeah. for the preacher of rapture. Yeah. The falling away cannot mean that. Now look at uh, 1 Timothy 4.1. It says, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith. Now, I don't believe you need to go to the Greek, but the Greek word is apostasia. It's an apostasy. It's the same word used when they, uh, the Israelites 
forsook Moses. And it doesn't speak of a physical falling away or a taking out of the earth. It speaks of a spiritual falling away, an apostasy, where people depart from the doctrine, which you already see happening with heresies like the pre-trib rapture or Zionism or, or, or so on and so forth. So first thing that's going to happen is there's going to be a falling away. The next thing that happened is that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who we know is the Antichrist. But something I thought really interesting is look at John 17, 12. It says, while I was with them, this is Jesus speaking in the world, I kept them in my name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. We know that's talking about Judas Iscariot. Acts 1, 25, that he may take part of this ministry and the apostleship from which Judas by transgression filled, that he might go into his own place, which I always thought was strange. Where is his own place? But see how, whether it be Judas or whether it be the spirit of Judas, that same spirit that was in Judas. And uh, Jesus also said, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil. He didn't say he hath a devil. He said he is a devil. Yeah. Is that same spirit that's going to be the man of sin and the title of the son of perdition. Same thing happened with Elijah. For all the prophets, this is Matthew eleven thirteen, 13. And the law prophesied until John, and if you will uh, receive it, this is Elias. He also, they also said they knew that he spake of John the Baptist. So that same spirit of Elias that was in John the Baptist will be the same thing when the Antichrist comes, that man of sin, and they're given the same title, the son of perdition. So in order for the rapture to take place, the first thing that's going to happen is an apostasy, a falling away. Second thing that's going to happen is the Antichrist has to be revealed. Then there's got to be a temple, because look at verse 4. It says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. There's no temple, no Antichrist revealed, and obviously there's no abomin uh, abomination of desolation. There's no time where he sits in the temple that doesn't exist yeah. and says he's God. So how can there be an imminent rapture? That's right. These things have to happen first before that day can come. Right. Look at verse 5 and 6. It says, Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. Watch this. What changed? Did the Holy Ghost suddenly make an entrance into this passage? Or are we still talking about he being the Antichrist? Now, my mom is an English school teacher. She taught, she's retired now, but she taught special ed English 9 through 12. And when she was a pre-tribber, I went to her and I said, Mom, that he, explain grammar to me. Explain what that he is. She says, well, that's a pronoun. And every pronoun has to have an antecedent. The antecedent is the only way a sentence would make sense. If I said, Ross, or if I said he just came in the church, everyone in this building would say, who just came in the church? It would make no sense. But if I said, I was out with Ross today, and he just came in the church, now you know, okay, Ross just came in the church. That's the only way that sentence makes sense. I can't just stick Holy Spirit in that, yeah. in that context and have that verse make sense when the whole time it was talking about the Antichrist. And he says, little children, it is the last time, and you have heard the Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists. That's what verse 7 talks about when it says the spirit of iniquity already works. Scenario number one, they say that taken out of the way means the church is taken out of the way. That's not possible because she uh, is a church, not he. Okay, uh, His wife hath made herself ready, Revelation 19.7. To her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. Okay, He cannot mean the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is omnipresent and the Holy Spirit is never taken out of the way. Okay, uh, The uh, taken out of the way, uh, Job 24.24 says, They are exalted for a little while, but are gone and brought low. They are taken out of the way as all other and cut off as the tops of the ears of corn. Cut off, according to Exodus 31.15, means to be put to death. So what's going to happen? That he means the Antichrist is going to be put to death. And that wicked shall be revealed, capital W, w which is the Satan himself, which the Lord will destroy with the brightness of his coming. I, I, uh, there's, there's a few more. I lost track of time. Let me just say this. That he is clearly has to be the Antichrist, or none of this will ever make sense. But the Bible does say we need to shore up some things about our doctrine, and if nothing else, let it give you some confidence when you talk to a pre-tribber, because once you take away this, there really is nothing left for a pre tree doctrine to stand on. Right. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you so much. I pray you bless the next speaker in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.